Hey guys, George of Soundtracks here, and this week today we're going to talk about one of the lesser known features of the Tsunami 2, Head End Power, or HEP. So let's get started. Now back in the early days when steam was running, steam would run heat through the steam lines, through the passenger cars to generate heat inside the passenger cars. Now in those early days, a lot of lights were illuminated with oil lamps or candles and things like that. Well, as electricity started to become more and more in our time, then what would happen is those passenger cars would be equipped with an onboard electric generator. Now, for further information on that, you can see our sound car, we do have an electric generator sound. But as diesels took over the head end of the trains, they had to be equipped with steam generators to be able to power and heat the cars. And so a lot of times on the back of these locomotives, you'll see some appliances here on the back of this E8, as well as on the back of this FP45, you're gonna see the steam generator appliances. But we're not gonna talk about that much today. As the electric became more and more prominent, diesels took over, passenger cars became illuminated with electric lights. And that meant more power needed to be generated for the passenger train. Enter the head end power or HEP mode. Now in early on EMD, the F40PH, as we see right here, actually was equipped with the first head end power. And what this did is this took the prime mover and notched it up to notch eight so that it was maintaining a constant speed to make sure that it was generating enough power to power the passenger train behind it. Now, when the engineer needed to go, it would then take some of that energy and apply it to the traction motors. Now this became very inefficient over time because what would happen is of course now you've got a diesel engine running at notch eight, it's using all that fuel as well. So let's take a look at EMD head end power. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and unmute our locomotive and you can hear it sitting here in idle. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate function 16 on our throttle, you're gonna hear the alarm bell kick on, and now you're gonna hear the prime mover notch up to notch eight. Now once the locomotive is in notch eight, it will stay in notch eight as long as function 16 is enabled. So I can move this locomotive. Speed step one, or speed step two, and you can hear that the prime mover is in notch eight. Now with our dynamic digital exhaust feature, I can put some pressure on a passenger train, and you're gonna hear that prime mover get a little louder as it's working against my hand. And then when I release, you'll hear it drop back down a little bit in intensity, but the prime mover notch is still in notch eight. Now we can turn off F16, and you're gonna hear the prime mover drop back down to idle, and the locomotive throttles and dynamic exhaust are gonna perform just the way they did before. Now when GE took over the passenger locomotive business, it found out that HEP didn't need to be in notch eight, it could be in notch six. And so with our GE Genesis P42s, when we hit HEP power, you're gonna hear it go to notch six. Now a really cool effect is the dynamic exhaust still works. So when you increase the throttle, your locomotive will continue still maintaining that throttle notching at notch six. But if you need just a little bit more power to get that train across the road, we'll be able to notch up to eight and back down to six, but never below six. So let's test it out. So now we're gonna take this GE P42. Now you can hear it sitting here at idle. Now again, I'm gonna take my throttle and activate function 16. Now you can hear the alarm bell kick on as it's alerting everybody it's about to go into head end power mode. Now you're gonna hear it notch up to notch six. Now once it gets there, we're gonna go ahead and use the throttle. Now we're gonna go ahead and just go forward speed step one or two. And you can hear that diesel engine intensify, but now we're gonna grab it and put a little resistance. And now you can hear it notching up as it's working harder against my hand. You'll hear it drop back down to six, and then we'll bring it to a stop. And again, it's gonna stay at notch six because head end power is enabled. Now we turn off 
function 16, and now you'll hear it drop back down to idle. Now one other aspect of head end power is when there was multiple units attached to the train, typically the engineers would not use the engine they were in for head end power because it was loud and noisy and it would also shake the locomotive a little bit more because of course that diesel engine is revved up. So a lot of times they would use the second unit to do the head end power. So when you're building your consist using advanced consisting, you can tell the lead locomotive to ignore the command to F16, but your trailing locomotive will follow the command to F16. Now, of course, the question then becomes, what happens when we have three locomotives in our consist? Where does the, co where does the head end power go? It still goes to the second unit. And the reason for that is because if there was a problem with the head end power, the engineer would then have to walk through two locomotives versus one to get to the HEP. And so therefore, when you're building your consist with multiple locomotives, you can have a more realistic experience replicating what the real railroads do as far as powering your passenger train. Now for more detailed information on head end power, how to use it and how to adjust your locomotive to do this, please refer to our reference guide the Soundtrack Tsunami 2 User's Guide that will help walk you through all the instructions on where to find all these features and how to use them.